Thank you for joining me. In this video, I'll be putting down subflooring starting with this oak tree that blew down. After cutting it into sections, I milled the logs into one and a quarter inch by 12 inch boards. After a brief time air drying, it's laid down giving me a platform to work upstairs. To further brace the walls and create a nailing surface for the board and batten siding, I add bridging to the framed walls and complete things with a 4x4 top plate to set my rafters. I hope you enjoy the video and stay tuned to the end for a few announcements. Things all cleaned up. Stumps right there, tree was arched over. Top of it all over here where the tractor was. So I've got some firewood loaded up in the small trailer. Big trailer already took another load of firewood back. It's probably enough firewood for my uses for a year. I supplement with heat with a wood stove, so I've got a heat pump and a wood stove. Um, so that's probably a year's worth of firewood done in a day and a half, or not even really a full day's work plus some great wood for milling.
Thank you to Policy Genius for sponsoring this video. You need home and auto insurance. It's that simple. Policy Genius makes it easy to get insurance done and done right. You all know I have multiple houses, including rentals and my personal home. Having the proper insurance coverage has always been an ordeal. You think you've got a good deal and then you're told you could be spending less or that your policy is not adequate. Policy Genius solves this problem by allowing you to compare home and auto insurance in one place. They can help you find coverage that is similar to what you have now at a lower price, and if you need to adjust your coverage to better suit your needs, that's not a problem either. They save customers an average of $1,250 a year over what they were paying for home and auto insurance. Getting started is easy. First, head on over to policygenius.com slash homemade home and answer a few quick questions about yourself and your property. Policy Genius takes it from there, comparing rates from America's top insurers from Progressive to Allstate. This allows them to find your lowest quotes and look for further ways to save by bundling home and auto insurance policies. If they find a better rate than what you're paying now, they'll move you over at no cost. Their top-notch services earn Policy Genius an excellent rating on Trustpilot. Head on over to policygenius.com slash homemade home to get started right now. I'm going to start the roof framing now, starting out with some 4x4s that will stick out off the wall here to support the rake rafter that will create the 2-foot overhang on this end. Of course, this is going to get an overhang that sticks out uh, quite a bit. 4x4s right here, rough sawn, so they'll stick out about 2 feet and the rest will just go along the wall. Next up is raising a ridge beam. A ridge beam is the piece that goes lengthwise down the building like that. Purpose for the rafters to go up and connect to. So I've done some calculating. I need to cut a support 108 inches from the top of the floor joist to the bottom of my 2x10 ridge beam.
what I just had to do is double up that front joist like I mentioned but it took some doing the one that was there was crowned pretty bad so I had to use the forks get this one raised in place get it started on one side use some clamps pull it into uh, alignment this way and then pull it together squeeze it together this way so there's riddled with nails but that front face of that uh, joist there isn't going to be showing in the end because it's going to be a wall built flush and that wall, whatever it's sided with, will come down to the bottom of those joists. I also had to take care of something upstairs. And I think this is kind of handy. It's too hard to film up here until I at least get some floor. So I didn't film it. But I've got this piece here. And what that is, is each one of these joists was a little bowed one way or another. So I took this uh, three-quarter inch board, slid it up against those studs, and then marked where each one of those... Um, where each one of the joists are and then I came to each joist and pulled it to that mark and then ran a screw down pulled this one to the mark ran a screw down so now all my joists are nice and straight so I can come and regardless of where I start the flooring start against that wall work my way towards the middle then I can pull this up then I think um, at some point I should do it now but I want to put some flooring down I was going to do some X uh, bracing bridging whatever you want to call it between these and that stiffens things up. With that said, this is going to be an ultra stiff floor. It's really not that much of a span. These are two by tens. This one's doubled up. That one's going to be doubled up. This one's against the wall and such a thick flooring. This span from here to there isn't very much. But I like the way it looks, but I'm still not sure exactly what I'm going to do because this space in between these uh, joists from downstairs could be useful for hanging lighting in or whatever it is I end up doing. But just a quick tip, I also had to pull down these supports that hold the ridge beam. That one, this one's coming down soon, but uh, that was going to be in the way of my flooring. The flooring is going to run right to the front of the doubled up joist and then right to the uh, edge of the studs. It is 141 inches. and put some pieces up here to where I could set the tripod up. Got one more piece to slap down and I can set the tripod up here. But these are 12 inch wide pieces so there'll be some gaps between things and then as these boards dry completely there'll be some gaps that form but this is just subflooring. So it's going to have the actual finished floor. We'll go on top of this. It's so nice just to be able to come up here and walk around on just that. It's going to be very neat to have the whole thing put in, and looking at it from underneath looks very cool.
you all for watching the video. I am in need of your feedback. I want to know kind of as far as this series goes so far, what do you think in general? Um, what do you think as far as the amount of detail that I'm showing? Like, did I show too much of the milling process or would you like to see more of the milling process? I think it was probably a good balance for this type of channel. The milling is not the focus, but with this being an off-grid build and not going about uh, acquiring materials in a traditional way, I do want to include that process. And I'm going to try to use different examples with the first one being getting a dead tree out of the woods. This one was getting a live tree that had blown over out of a field. Uh, one was pine, one was oak. So it's kind of fun to show that process. Um, and just to be a reminder of where these materials are coming from. Um, and that's whether they're I'm doing these, getting these materials myself, or whether you're, whether you're buying them from a store, it's still the same process, basically. If someone's got to go out and get these trees, bring them back to a mill of some sort, mill it up, it's a lot of processing involved. Um, been getting asked a lot about the grading of lumber. This particular thing is, you know, an agricultural purpose, uh, purposed building, so I'm not going to have, uh, uh, this lumber's not graded. But in the future, I may do some mill some lumber that I do have graded for residential type projects. For example, I've got a, um, uh, I'd like to build a truly traditional house with electric hooked up to it, septic tank and everything. And it would be cool to build it all out of wood that I mill as well, because I want that to be sort of a, it's not going to be at a lake, but a lake house-ish, a simple cottagey type thing. I'm not sure what to call it yet. But I have that uh, an idea in the future, so that would be like a house with a traditional concrete foundation, perhaps a basement. Um, it could end up being up on piers of some sort, I'm really not sure yet. But um, tucked in here beside the driveway overlooking the field is sort of a guest house, um, but a real guest house, one that someone could, or a mother-in-law house type deal, whatever you want to call it. But just a, just a small little house that would be on this property, because you're allowed to do that for a family member. Um, so. Uh, um, I guess that is about it. Check out my book, Cheap Houses, How I Find and Buy Inexpensive Real Estate. I'm also going to have all the links in the description. So most of these videos, I'm putting the sawmill video in the link too. For those of you who haven't seen it, you can see sort of the process of getting that sawmill. A lot of people are, um, you know, they ask questions about it or, you know, I didn't realize how much they were. I looked them up and uh, that type of thing. But if you want to see more about the sawmill itself, you can go check that out. And then, you know, you can look it up if you want to. But um, uh, there's many brands of sawmills, for those of you who are kind of interested in it, from sawmills that are a couple thousand dollars, I'd say, for band sawmills, up to tens of thousands. You know, you could probably spend uh, over a hundred grand on one, depending on which one you get. But sort of the upper end of, I'll say, the average band sawmills that people buy, and this is getting into using them professionally, is sort of that... Sixty to eighty thousand dollar range is sort of the upper end of what they cost, down to a couple thousand dollars. Um, uh, I think that's it. I uh, appreciate you all watching. It's been fun doing this project so far. Up next, I'm going to be starting the uh, roof structure. So this part got me to where I had the top plates prepared, and I'll be standing the ridge beam and then putting up the rafters next and uh, answering the question of which direction I'm going with the dormers. Um, I'm very pleased. It's different than what I said, but I'm very pleased with what I am doing. Thanks for watching. See you next time.